<sighs> Hello and welcome back to Archery for Dummies. Today we're going to talk about the anatomy of a bow. Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm FJJ here at PodiumArcher.com going over the anatomy of a bow. The basics, bones and ligaments and muscles and tendons and all that kind of stuff. What is all on here? Well, let's start at the end. This is a cam or a wheel defined by its shape. Okay, the more egg shaped it is, it's typically referred to as a cam. Old school target bows had a perfectly round looking thing called a wheel. Everything you're gonna find today is some version of a cam. There's a lot of different kinds of cam systems, but almost everything today is truly a derivative of the original dual cam technology. They give you all kinds of fancy buzzwords and slang and whatever to try to act like it's not a two cam bow, but these are equal but opposite eccentrics. And the only reason they don't call it a two cam bow is because it doesn't attach to a fixed point on the, the limb. It's attached to the cam itself. So everything acts as a equally timeable two cam eccentric for the most part. Still a couple of hybrids, hybrids rolling around out there where this cam and this cam are not mirror images of each other, but slightly different. But in general, almost everything is a two cam bow. The limb. This is where the force comes. This is like a pulley, a cammed pulley, and this is the actual leverage pressure. Almost every bow built today has a split limb design or two limbs independent of each other that reach into some form of a limb pocket, basically acting like one limb, but taking the hot spot or the failure point, which was commonly here, away. And when they started making limbs really short, you start running into real big issues with having any limb left over with the connection in between. So they make a limb pocket system that basically acts as the central point of the limb, holding them square and equal to each other. The advantage of going to a split limb is multiples, but the biggest one is you can actually independently check each limb. So your left to right variants can be manipulated by different pressure. And a lot of bows built today, not all of them, have different limbs in different spots on purpose. So you'll have a heavier one here, a weaker one there, and the top and the bottom won't match at all. As opposed to traditional limbs, they were all exactly equally the same. So those are limbs. The axle, a lot of them today, the axle is what goes through the limb and it holds the cam assembly in place. A lot of these are threaded now where you'll see bolts on them, but it's still just a metal rod that goes through the middle and holds everything together on upper assemblies. There are spacers or top hats or shims or whatever you want to call them. There are gaps in between here that have a certain number of pieces or particular pieces on each bow in here. Helps put the cam where they intend it to be for wheeling purposes. The limb pocket. This is what holds the limbs in place. All bows have some form of this. Some more basic crude bows only have a limb bolt and a little piece over the top. It doesn't have a full assembly that encapsulates and holds the limb in place. So that's a limb pocket. We're down to here. This is a dowel for the bolt, the limb bolt right here. This is what changes your poundage. It increases or decreases the pressure that the limb set against the cam. So that is your limb bolt and it goes into a dowel right here. That's what it's threaded into. Some bow, some risers are machine threaded all the way in without a dowel and some have a rotating dowel in them. That's a limb lock screw. If you're going to adjust your limb pressure and you see one of these on the side of your limb pocket, you need to pop it loose. You don't take it all the way out, just pop it loose. Simple as that. This is a riser. This big old chunk of metal in the middle here. That is the structural bow itself. This is what your stability comes from. And the longer this is and the straighter this is, typically the more stable and easier it is to shoot and more accurate it can be. Most of them are made out of machined aluminum, but there are some out there that are made out of layered carbon fiber and some out of a magnite or magnesium aluminum alloy that is also machined. There's a couple different things out there now, but the majority of everything you're gonna see is a machined aluminum riser, typically out of 6061 aluminum, sometimes out of 7075, depends on the brand, but almost everybody's using 6061 aluminum. This is a roller guard. If it didn't have wheels on it, it would be called a cable guard. The purpose of this is to pull the cables out of center so when your arrow goes by, it doesn't hit anything. Relatively simple device. Some of these are adjustable, most of them are not. Most of them are a bolted on, non-flexible adjustable thing. 
And like I said, if it has a round dowel here and a piece of plastic that holds the cables on, that would be called a cable slide. And the plastic piece that would roll up and down there needs to be replaced periodically. Traditionally, these bearing style ones don't ever need to be replaced. This is a string stop. And it literally does that. It's sitting here to stop the string's momentum forward. So when it vibrates after the bow goes off, it slows the vibration to next to nothing, makes the bow a lot quieter. This is a stabilizer bushing. Same as this, there's multiples in here. The purpose of this is to screw a stabilizer into or a wrist strap or something around that, those variances for you to be able to attach things onto here. Almost every bow has one directly underneath the handle. A lot of bows have an additional one back here and some will even have them back here for mounting rear stabilizers, V-bar brackets, things like that. They're full of them and a good quality bow will have this be a separate piece that they call a stabilizer bushing. So if you screw it up or ding it up or cross thread it, you can replace it and put it back in here. Cheaper bows will traditionally just thread right into the aluminum and expect you to use that. This is the grip of the bow and this bow, the Dartons are machined right into it. So they actually have you shoot right off the metal. Several bows out there have a piece that goes over this that would be referred to as your grip as well. A lot of options there. This is your, these are the screws where your rest would install. Your rest would go right here onto the back to hold your arrow in place. And these screws right here are for your sight to mount to. They give you a couple different variances, higher and lower, of where you can choose to put them. So it bolts your side onto the side. Some bows have holes through the middle now. Matthews notoriously with the bridge lock. Hoyt and several others with a front mount they call a pick mount. Different ways to attach a sight, but all your sights are gonna bolt on in one variation or another right here. This bow also has quiver bracket holes, so you can use a two-piece quiver if you wanna do that as opposed to bolting it over your sight. Most bows have them. If you look above the sight and below the cable guard, you'll traditionally find where they are or below the stabilizer bushing, you'll traditionally find them on just about any bow and that pretty much covers that. Each bow system will have at least three pieces of string on it and as many as seven depending on how elaborate it is. This is called the bow string. This is called a cable. And this little piece that's working its way through here and around the cams is called a yoke. That's your terminology for strings. Like I said, this is a five piece system. There's this yoke, two yokes, two cables, and a bow string. But there are up to as many as seven depending on how wildly designed their systems are. If you're unsure about any of these definitions, go to your local pro shop, buy things from them, spend your money down there and ask them questions about these things. Hey, can you explain to me what a riser is? I saw this video and the guy was really fast and I didn't quite understand. Can you explain it to me? That kind of thing. That's what they're there for. They're there to help you. They're there to work on your bow for you if you're not comfortable to work on it yourself. And they're there to help advise you. It's a relationship you need to work on. And if some part of your bow ever fails, you can't contact a manufacturer and get the part. You have to go through a dealer for that. So you're gonna need that relationship. Please, please, please go give them a chance. If you're gonna buy it online and only if you're gonna buy it online, podiumarcher.com for all those archery needs, $99 and up is free shipping and coupon code MFJJ will save you a little money. But don't buy it from me, go to the pro shop. That's the anatomy of a bow. Comment down below on what I didn't discuss or what isn't elaborate enough or what you didn't understand about what I just went over. But those are the basic parts involved in every bow and I'm sure I forgot something. All you know-it-alls out there will give me all that down below and I'll learn better and I'll be able to present better to you next time. And it's only because of the Karens that leave me the negative comments that I ever learn anything. I really appreciate it, Karens. Thank you.